So this is a video that you guys have been wanting me to do for quite some time and I have been wanting to do it as well. I've been planning this one out and now I am able to do it. So this is a video featuring 20 of my favorite Diptyque fragrances and they are ranked. So if you're curious to learn about this house and find out my top 20 Diptyque fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in to Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. That's right, today we're talking about the House of Diptyque and 20 of their fragrances ranked. And I've been a fan of this house since the late 90s, early 2000s, somewhere around there. I can't quite remember, but their store was opened here in the early 2000s here in San Francisco. They've been in a one location in a curious little um, shopping um, alley that we have in San Francisco called Maiden Lane. It was an old Parisian style boutique which had, had an upstairs and a downstairs, but now they're in a more modern, um, Main Street kind of a, a building, which I guess that's what happens, but uh, thankfully we have the store and I love this house and I, I'm assuming you guys do too because some of you have been requesting, uh, not some, a lot, but I feel like it's more underrated, it's not a hyped house and hopefully we can help by doing this video. But before we do all that, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So let's talk Diptyque. A little information before we move forward with the uh, countdown or the, the ranking, I just want to point out that Diptyque fragrances come in many different types of bottles but uh, the main ones as you can see are clear bottles like this which features eau de toilette fragrances and dark ones like this which features um, eau de parfum concentration so if you like them fresher and lighter eau de toilettes more intense, uh, you know, more um, long-lasting. Well, it's not necessarily true, but usually the, the case is. Then you would go with the Eau de Parfums. And there are some other bottles as well, well like these. And, of course, there's also a bottle like this. And last but not least, bottles like this. I don't have every single bottle design here and of course I don't have every single fragrance by Diptyque so if I've left one of yours off or one of your favorites off I'm sorry I just don't own it and also this might you know upset some of you guys because I'm gonna rank it in a way that uh, some of you might think oh my god why is he ranking this so low because you know uh, just it's my ranking and this is what I'm feeling with these fragrances currently so at number 20 I'm speaking about a fragrance that I bought back in 2008 when it was first launched. This was the very first Diptyque fragrance I bought. L'eau de Neroli, this one right here, and this is created by Olivier Peschot. Throughout this video, you're gonna hear his name come up quite frequently because he's done a lot of fragrances from the, for this house, and I've been speaking about him quite frequently this week as well uh, with the H&M uh, fragrances and also with uh, uh, mention in my uh, vanilla fragrances video. But he created this one for Diptyque, and this is uh, one of my very first real loves of uh, um, uh, the Neroli uh, fragrance. Like, I bought this around two, 2008, and on my first channel, I was speaking a lot about this uh, fragrance. Sadly, this is uh, still the fragrance I bought back in 2008. It's been around for 12 years, and I don't speak too much about it. It's way in the back in my uh, closet, and I pulled it out, and I said, you know what, I am going to rank it, but I'm going to rank it low because there is another similar fragrance on the list that's going to be further up. But this is great. If you like Neroli, it's uh, all about Neroli, citruses, there's orange blossom, there's bergamot, pedigree, lemongrass, musk, beeswax, so a little bit of a honeyed-like quality in there, slightly plasticky, beeswaxy kind of quality, and that's what you get with this one. It's pretty solid. It doesn't come in this larger bottle anymore. It's a smaller bottle and it's a smaller size, but this is a 200 ml bottle. And as you can see, this is how much I have left. So that is at number 20. Now this next one is probably going to piss you off, but I'm featuring it at number 19. And this is the fragrance probably this house is known for. Everybody wears this fragrance if they like fig. I'm talking about Philosicus in the EDT and EDP. I have them in both concentrations. If I want less intensity, I would go with the EDT. If I want more, I would go with the EDP. And the EDP also kind of gives me more of a fig milk experience versus this one. This is more fresher. And this one features fig leaves, fig fruit, the green notes, coconut, the fig tree, woody notes, and cedar. So it's a green, green fragrance with slight, wo uh, not woody, but slight fruity hints of the fig fruit. But the coconut kind of, I don't know, I, I guess I like coconut, but for me, it, it's, it's kind of like n not very satisfying for me here. I know it's kind of replacing that fig milk note or to create a fig milk-like accord, 
but uh, I guess maybe I've just been burnt out on this fragrance and I've worn it for a long time. This was probably my second uh, purchase from this house and it's just a staple. Everybody in my family loves this because we all love the smell of fig leaves and trees and things like that. But I've kind of gotten burnt out on it. Not burnt out, but just a little tired of it and I wanted to put it at the bottom. Anyway, you might be a big fan of this one. If you are, let me know. This is Philosicus and EDT and EDP at number 19. One more thing about these two fragrances. It was originally created by Olivia Giacobetti and the EDT. They launched the EDP much later, but this came a year after the same perfumer, Olivia Giacobetti, created a fragrance called Premier Figuier for L'Artisan Parfumé. So they do have similar smelling qualities, and you might be a fan of one or the other or both, I don't know, but I do have a comparison video of these two fragrances to the two different versions of Premier Figuier on the channel as well, with Dahlia. If you're curious to watch that, go check it out. But these are cr created by Olivia Giacobetti. So at number 18, I'm going to a fragrance that originally sampled as an EDT. I kept coming back to it, but never really biting the bullet and grabbing the fragrance. But later they launched an EDP version, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna get it finally. It's a stronger version, a longer lasting, a deeper, richer version, but still, I never pull for it. I'm talking about Vetiverio, and I love Vetiver in fragrances. But this one, you know, it's a great solid release. It's that damp, woody, earthy, vetiver, green, really nicely blended with grapefruit. The bitterness of the grapefruit complements the vetiver very, very beautifully. There's a little bit of a rosy touch under there. There's some mandarin orange. There's some patchouli. And again, this is created by Olivier Pesho. But, you know, it's a great scent. He does great work. This is uh, Olivier Pesho, the perfumer. And there's a lot of fragrances in the top five that he's created that I'm obsessed with. But this one seems to be the one that's kind of like... Um, the sleeper. It doesn't really get talked about much, but if you are a veteran fan, you might be digging this one. Check it out. It's Vetiverio, and that's at number 18. Now, this next one is a fragrance that I immediately fell in love with and had to buy it. Uh, it's a fresh fragrance. I love it a lot, but it's ranked low because it's not your traditional fragrance. It's more of a splash uh, body and also, um, you know, your fabrics and linens and things like that. So you can spray your bed sheets and, you know, pillows and you can do it all over. It's called Au Pluriel and this is at number 17. And this is great. It's a fresh, fresh fragrance. It's lighter, but still has a solid, strong smell. And the smell is of ivy, Turkish rose, citruses, musk, woody notes. It does hint at a little bit of Lombardon Low, and that's coming up a little uh, later, but the, a lot fresher. A lot. I, I would also say maybe a little bit rosier as well. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great scent. It's fresh. It's refreshing. It's perfect for really, really hot days. Also great for after a shower when you're showered and you just want some light scent, you can put that on. Again, you can spray your you know whole bed and pillows and things like that, and you can have the whole um, experience of that all while you're sleeping as well. Anyway, Au Pluriel, it's a great scent. It comes in 200 ml. And as I was saying, this does not come in this size bottle anymore, but this one does. And I don't know who the perfumer for that one is, and I think it's uh, Olivier Pesho again. So this next one is uh, Diptyque's answer to the tuberose fragrance, and they do it really interesting here. This is Dosan, and I only have worn the EDP version, and it's so great, guys. If you like tuberose, you gotta check this one out. But here, what they've done with the tuberose is matched it with Pettigrain, and Pettigrain has this bitter green smell. It's the leaves of the orange tree. And what happens is it almost is toning down the tuberose's really strong smell. And what happens is if you've ever smelled a, a flower when it's not completely bloomed versus when it's you know, matured and bloomed and has the most potent smell. The the, the pedigree is actually toning down that intense tuberose smell, and it almost smells like a green tuberose, a not so bloom, not so mature tuberose. So then you add some musk and pink pepper, and it's a great, great fresh, green smelling tuberose that I really, really enjoy here. I like this pedigree note, and I like it a lot. And I'm smelling it here, contrasted with the sweetness of the the tuberose, and it works really wonderfully. Almost kind of also smells a little bit like orange blossom, like uh, the tuberose match with that citrusy kind of bitter green smell of the pedigree. You get a tuberose slash orange blossom like uh, smell. It's great. It's fresh, floral, and wonderful to wear in the summertime. But this is the EDP. There's an EDT as well, and this is a lot deeper and richer. Anyway, that's Dosan, an EDP at number 16. And at number 15, speaking of that Lombardon Low, this is the EDT, and I'm at the very bottom. As you can see, it's getting really low. Lombardon Low is probably 
one of the earlier fragrances that the, this house released. I think it was the mid 70s, maybe a little after the mid 70s. And it's been very, very popular since then. For me, this one's very, very green and rosy. And that's why I said it kind of reminds me of Eau Pluriel. But there is a, a little bit of an older quality for this one compared to Eau Pluriel, which is fresher, brighter, a little more modern. But with this one, there's Cassis, Rose, Black Currant, Black Currant Leaf, Bergamot Ambergris Musk. And to me, this one also smells like the Diptyque Candle Bay. If you're a fan of that candle, if you like candles, and this will be definitely one for you to try. Now, I've never worn the EDP. I want to try it soon. And since I'm at the very bottom of my EDT, I've had this for quite some time. I guess I can always uh, switch over to the EDP. But if you like green, fresh fragrances, rosy, with some depth, definitely L'Ombre Don Low is one for you to try. Now, this next one is the very first fragrance the Boutique House launched. This is Low. I think it came out in the early 70s. It might even be the late 60s. But this is all about spices. You've got cloves here, cinnamon, nicely matched with um, kind of rosy uh, aromatic smelling geranium. There's some woody notes of uh, sandalwood. There's a rose note and it's really, really great guys. This is for those people that like those cinnamony, clovey kind of, uh, of fragrances. It reminds me of the holidays because of the uh, cinnamon and the cloves because cinnamon and cloves always reminds me of the holidays. And if you want holiday in a bottle, this is definitely one for you to try. It's perfect for the holidays like to wear around that time or if you want to wear it outside of the holidays, you can always remember the holidays by wearing something like this. It's just spicy like ultra spicy for me it also kind of hints at like a very spicy chai tea there's no tea notes here it's woody and spicy and aromatic but it kind of hints at that anyway this is low at number 14 and at number 13 it's Lotre this one right here uh, I recently spoke about this in my cumin caraway video and I ranked it at number one because of its potency in that video I was ranking from the lightest cumin caraway to the most intense and potent this one is here because uh, I, I prefer some of the other fragrances more from this house but if you want a cumin caraway bomb this is definitely one for you like this is even spicier than the last one it doesn't feature the um, cinnamon and cloves here but this one features uh, loads of caraway loads of it says caraway for me it smells more like cumin because it's so pungent and strong nutmeg cardamom coriander black pepper carnation even goes into a clovey direction because I find carnations and cloves kind of smelling similar sometimes and this is patchouli also in the base and it's really really good Good guys. If you like a very pungent and spicy and you love cumin caraway, you gotta try L'Autre, this one right here. It's very, very sexy. Now this next fragrance is fragrance that was launched in 2015 and when they were uh, announcing the fragrance and I heard about it, I'm like, oh my god, they're finally gonna do it. They're gonna finally release an Oud fragrance. And when they came out, it was definitely uh, a surprisingly uh, great scent. It's called Oud Palau and as soon as I smelled it right now as I was doing this, it reminds me of uh, Oud Espahan. If you like Oud Espahan and you want something a little stronger, more intense, a little beefier also a little more animalic because this is an animalic oud here they're using laotian oud here with uh, rose tobacco rum so there's a little bit of booziness with this one the labdanum comes in as well it gives it an ambery touch sandalwood you know creamy camphor patchouli vanilla i think it's a great great scent but you gotta make sure be warned about the fact that it is animalic. These fragrance, this particular fragrance is animalic, and I feel like it's a little more animalic than the Oud Espahan, but it does remind me of it. So if if you want something uh, as a replacement for Oud Espahan, definitely check out Oud Palau. And also I have a comparison video on the channel of the two fragrances. Anyway, Oud Palau at number 12. And at number 11, we're going to Eau de Sens. And this one, as I said, kind of hints at the Lo de Neroli from earlier. Uh, I prefer this one a little more, and this is created by Olivier Pechot. He created both of them. They're so different, but still smelling similar. And in, in this fragrance, it's about orange blossom. In the last, the other one, it was both orange blossom and neroli. And here, it's mostly about orange blossom, uh, bitter orange, angelica, juniper, juniper berries, patchouli. It's great though. It's really, really great. It's a fresh orangey smell, and it's pretty awesome to wear in the hot summertime. It does get a little powdery on me. I'm not sure where the powdery is coming from. Maybe it's from the Angelica note. I'm not 100% sure, but if you like it orangey, orange blossomy, soapy, clean, definitely try Eau de Sense. I was going to show you what the labels in the back of these bottles also look like. Uh, they're really beautifully visual if you've ever taken a look at them. Uh, this is another one, as you can see. You can see ivy leaves back there. But it's great to look at these uh, bottles. Uh, even the darker ones have uh, photos on the back. 
Anyway, all the scents is at number 11, a great, great scent. And now we're in the top 10, going to a fragrance called Volute, this one right here. Now, Volute used to come in an EDT and an EDP. I've only owned the EDP for the longest time. I always wanted to buy the EDT. Then they discontinued it and I never got to buy it. But recently, when Barney's was doing the closeout, I found a bottle of the EDT and I've stored it away. I have it now. But as far as Volutes goes, this is their tobacco fragrance. If you like tobacco, you've got to check out Volutes. It's got tobacco. It's a bit powdery with iris. There's honey. Loads of spices here. There's some fruity touches in there. Styrax. It's a great great tobacco for me it smells like I don't want to say spice market a spice market or maybe like a, a market of some kind in a foreign country more like a you know like a traditional style maybe like North Africa the Middle East or something when the, and then there's like a honeyed smell fruity kind of a tobacco smell smoking like a maybe like even Turkey where they smoke the shisha and the the nargile and things like that the hookahs, if you guys don't know what that is, uh, but I'm sure you do. Anyway, if you like that kind of a smell, check this one out. It's a great, great scent. It's a great tobacco. I had forgotten about it, but recently I've uh, discovered it again, and I, I really do enjoy it. There's the fruitiness in there that I really, really like, and I think it's a great solid release. So that's Volutes at number 10. At number 9, is this one going to disappoint you? I hope not. I've only worn the EDP in this one. I went straight to it because I heard from a lot of people that it doesn't last. The EDP does last. This is number nine, it's Tam Dao EDP. And you know what Tam Dao is about. Sandalwood, cedar, amberwood, coriander, vanilla, lime, musk, ginger. This one's created by Daniel Moliere. The Volutes was created by Fabrice Pellegrin. So this one, you know, I'm, I'm smelling this Tam Dao here. I never compared the H&M Santal that they had, I recently spoke about. And I'm, it's reminding me of it. So it's a great scent. I love this one. It smells like a very, very creamy sandalwood with like a pencil shavings, dry wood chips kind of a smell in there. So there's a little bit of a slight little bit of vanilla touch with the vanilla. And there's a little bit of a gingery zing to it. Musk, it's, it's a great scent. I think this is probably one of the best sandalwood fragrances. Do you guys like this one? Let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. That's Tam Dao at number nine. We're getting to the place now that uh, all the fragrances are great. I just had to figure out where I'm going to rank these. And this next one is one that reminds me of 80s. The 80s. Well, I used to love to wear Dracar Noir. This is Odamente. Oh man, this is so good. Totally reminds me of uh, Dracar Noir. But this one, uh, it's not created with lavender or other aromatic notes. This one is using mint. And according to the Diptyque website, mint from Oregon, the state of Oregon. So it's like, I guess they're, they're like, they use like a very special kind of, or they produce a very special kind of mint. But this one only not only has mint, but geranium, patchouli, nutmeg, rose. Those of you that like barbershop scents, like Dracar Noir, you know, classic, because it does have a very classic touch. And I've heard from women that they don't like it, even though this is a unisex release. I think they just, it, from the women, uh, I've uh, Instagram fo photos of this, and the women have mentioned that it reminds them of their dad or their dad's fragrances and things like that. So it is a, a leaning on a masculine side, but still targeted unisex. But I really love this because I used to wear Dracar Noir, Noir so much in the 80s, like a lot. I probably went through three bottles from the mid to towards the end of of the 80s and this totally brings back memories but it's a much more intense concentrated version of what Dracar Noir smells like today anyway Eau de Minte is a great scent at number eight this next one is their vanilla it's Eau de well in the EDP and I also have it in the EDT which I just spoke about in my vanilla fragrances video again we're ranking these. Where do I put them? It's ended up here. It was a toss up between the next one, but I had to put it here because um, I love this vanilla, but it does hint at some of the other vanillas out there. So there, there's vanillas out there that this vanilla reminds me of. So it, it kind of like slipped to the bottom a little more, but uh, in the end, it's still a great, great vanilla. There's loads of vanilla here. Uh, I'm preferring the EDP, but there, there's some dif differences and similarities. This one has loads of vanilla. There's loads of spices. There's ambroxan in here and some uh, rock rose. It smells so delicious. Uh, both of them are great, but it depends on what you want. A lighter version, uh, you go with this one. You can wear it in like um, a little warmer temperature. If you want something more intense, you want uh, the concentration, you want the 
density of the fragrance, you would go with this one and you would wear it in the cooler weather. But it's great. There's lots of spices here. It smells very, very spicy. There's a little bit of a boozy quality in there as well. Of course, it's loaded, loaded with vanilla and it's great. So that's Eau de well at number seven. At number six, it's a fragrance called 34 Boulevard Saint Germain in the EDT and in the EDP. And I am so preferring the EDP now and I ranked this uh, here in the for the EDP but if you don't know this this is probably the second fragrance or the third fragrance I bought from this house uh, it came out like in the 2010 or 2009 it was like an anniversary release and what they did with this fragrance was they created the fragrance utilizing some of the notes in a lot of their other fragrances so it doesn't smell it doesn't smell like other fragrances, so it has some uniqueness to it, which I really like. I love the EDT. I, I, this is my second bottle, but the EDP, oh man, it's so good. So intense. It's woody. It's cinnamony. So it's very, very spicy. Lots of sandalwood here. It has a creamy aspect to it. Loads of amber. Love the amber part. Cloves, vanilla, iris. There's a little bit of cassis here. There's a little bit of pink, pink pepper. So basically they're borrowing a lot of notes from a lot of their different fragrances. Some of them that I've already spoken about and they've created a fragrance. But the EDP is really, really beautiful, guys. Very, very intense. Very, very long lasting. So that is at number six. Only thing is, I wish I had bought a, uh, a flanker of this called Homage. Such a great release they now have it in another fragrance but it's not as good as the original homage they have a, a version of homage in a, in a bottle like this but the original homage in a bottle like this was really really awesome if you guys have that let me know it's such a great release i can't get my hands on it now either way though 34 boulevard saint germain edp or edt at number six there's also a third version of this as a fresh version as well and that actually is also worth it i don't currently own it top five are you ready for it fleur de peau at number five why did i rank this at number five i like its muskiness i like its powderiness i like its aldehydic touches i love that it has ambrette there's rose there's carrot ambergris pink pepper this is a great, great scent, guys. It's great. It's, it's just really, really musky. It's a sexy, sexy, musky fragrance, but with lots of iris. It does hint at a little bit of things like Chanel Number no. 18 and a few other, like Ambrette from uh, Le Labo and a few other fragrances. Um, I have it featured in the Ambrette video. If you're curious to learn more about Ambrette, go check that video out. But if you like musky fragrances, powdery fragrances, aldehydic fragrances, Ambrette fragrances, Fleur de Peau is amazing. And this is created by Olivier Peshaw once again, and it's a solid solid release and it definitely deserves the number five spot so this next one is kind of a curveball and i've mentioned this one in other videos before and i love this one it smells great it's like one of my favorite ivy fragrances if you like the smell of ivy the growth on uh you know woods and uh, you know wherever and backyards and gardens and things like that you gotta try Odelier. Odelier is all about ivy, cyclamen, musk, geranium, woody notes, rosewood, ambergris. This one's created by Fabrice Pellegrin and it has an ozonic minerally quality but very woody and very green. It's great. This is an eau de toilette obviously these bottles and the clear are eau de toilettes so if you like a green and ozonic and slightly minerally uh, kind of a fragrance you can wear this one in the summertime and it will be fresh. It does have, I guess it's not, for, no, what I was going to say was it smells older. It's not really because this came out in the 2000s, the mid, so it doesn't smell like that old, but it kind of has this like old, um, just, just the greenness, like there's a dusty, kind of a quality with it. And I feel like uh, when you've, you know, when you're around ivy, the, the the plants you see a lot of dust on them because it collects and it attracts dust and I feel like there's a little bit of that dusty quality in the whole fragrance wearing experience so in the end you're smelling the dust and the greenness of the ivy in this fragrance it's wonderful this is Odelier at number four at number three Au Capital oh man this is so good so so good it's a great great rose it's rose patchouli it's pink pepper bergamot and this is once again created by olivier pechot Odelier was created by fabrice pellegrin so 
the next of the all the, the rest of the fragrances are created by o Olivia Peshaw. Oh Capital is a cheaper fragrance. It's really really delicious. It's loads of patchouli. I feel like the patchouli is really solid, and it kind of is like an offspring of the next fragrance uh, that's coming up, because it kind of smells like the patchouli in the next fragrance. Because the next fragrance is all about patchouli, but this one adds the rose and it adds the pink pepper and the bergamot, and it makes it a, a cheaper fragrance. It's not a cheaper fragrance in that traditional sense of utilizing oak moss in the base. I'm assuming there is, but I think that patchouli is basically replaced um, or uh, kind of like taking the place of the oak moss. At least for me, that's how I interpret this fragrance. It might be different. It might be in there, but with the fact that um, Ifra has regulated the amount of uh, oak moss you can use. I feel like they're doing it with the patchouli because this is, smells very, very patchouli-esque. Anyway, Eau Capital is at number three. And speaking of the patchouli fragrance, it's Tempo. Oh man, this is so good. Tempo is at number two. And this is also created by Olivia Peshaw. And Tempo is all about patchouli. And I feel like when they've added rose to this, they basically they got Eau Capital, and it's the same perfumer, so he's pretty, pretty much, you know, working with the same formula, I think, and he's done a great job. This tempo is so good, guys. If you like patchouli, but on the green side, think of something like Parfums de Nicolai, Patchouli Intense. Not necessarily like that, but yes, like that, because this is a very, very green patchouli. Loads of mate. It's a green mate like tea. Clary sage, pink pepper, violet leaves, bergamot. See, the pink pepper here is also in the pink pepper, the, in the uh, uh, Eau Capital. So I feel like it's the similar formula. He basically kind of like advanced it and moved it forward by adding the rose and creating a shipper from it. So in the end, Tempo definitely deserves a number two spot and Eau Capital definitely deserves a number three spot. If you're looking for a very green patchouli, you've got to try this one. Anyway, Tempo at number two. And can you guess by number one? I've been talking a lot about it. It focuses on Benzoin. Do you like Benzoin? I'm talking about Benjoin Bohème, this one right here. Created by Olivia Pesho once again. This bottle, guys, is so gorgeous. Look at this. It's like, kind of like almost like cracked bottle, uh, but really, really awesome. They now have four different fragrances in this kind of bottle design, and the homage that used to be in here, reformulated or redone, is now in a bottle like this. I think it's got the green cap, and it's a more of like a white green combo. Anyway, Benjamin Bohem focuses on Benzoin. Benzoin is this warm vanillic resin that I love. I love this note. It's it's not a lot in fragrances. Oh, it is actually a lot in fragrances. In fact, I have a video about Benzoin fragrances on the channel. Go catch that. But Benzoin is warm and cozy, vanillic and resinous. It's just a very, very beautiful, beautiful oriental note that it's really, really uh, smells amazing to me. It's not only a vanillic, it's also resinous. The combo is just really delicious. But this one is also focusing on Styrax. Styrax is really, really great. It's a sweet kind of a resin touch. Sandalwood, there's some patchouli, there's angelica. If you like, if you like, if you like warm fragrances, oriental fragrances, you gotta smell this one. And I used to be a fan, of, I'm still a fan of Benjoin 19 from Le Labo, but when I smell this next to it, this this one just phenomenal. I, I really love it. Also there's Guerlain's uh, Bois de Harmony, which is also focusing on Benzoin. Another one that comes close, but since I've had this one, it's just a phenomenal Benzoin fragrance. Go catch the Benzoin video featuring four or five different fragrances with the note. But if you want a Benzoin bomb, this is it right here. Benjoin Bohème. And I think the sexiness comes with the combination of the Benzoin Styrax and the patchouli that's in here. So, so good together. Anyway, Benjoin Bohème is the number one fragrance for me from the House of Diptyque. What do you guys think of this list? What do you guys think of these fragrances? Do you own them? Do you have them? Do you like them? Have you been eyeing them? Let me know if you're a fan of Diptyque. Also, have you been dabbling in the fragrances of the, from this house? Uh, do you like their candles? Do you have any of their other products? Because they have skincare and things like that as well. Put a comment down. Let me know uh, what you think. Also, do you guys have a Diptyque boutique in your city? Because I know it's out there. There's a bunch out there. And even New York City might have two or three, maybe even four uh, boutiques. Uh, let me know. Put some comments down and let me know if you've been to one of their boutiques. Other than that, guys, thanks so much for watching this video today. Uh, let me know if you like these top 20s on brands. I might do a few more, although I'm running out of brands to do top 20s with, so might have to kind of uh, scale back, I guess. But today I was focusing on this particular brand that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. Anyway, I hope everyone's doing great. If you have any questions or comments, put it below. Otherwise, please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.